वर्णिवे शरमणीय दर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज जय सुप्रीम और माइटी और बिलोड घनश्याम महाराज पाथ में कटो लिब्रेशन पूज्य पाथ गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यूटीज जय स्वामी नारायण Now during the Sibir, we learn how to own Rajipo as well as what is the Rajipo and to whom we have to try to please or what happen if we please Bhagwan and Bhagwan se kandik sant. So now, if suppose we are doing many such kind of things like we are doing seva, we are doing bhajan, or we are also uh obeying bhagwan's and bhagwan's ekadik sans agnya and still sometimes so sometimes uh s- some different kind of incident happen in our life that by even by performing such kind of duties meaning uh, seva bhajan or uh obeying bhagwan's command in this way many many different things if we perform still we do not attain rajipo of bhagwan or santo or devotees then many such things or many those factors which affect in our life and those factors they obstruct to attain rajipo of bhagwan santo and bhakto one of those factors one of those bad things that is uh, one is greed if we have greed for something meaning if we desire to become more wealthier than today or if we desire to attain some worldly things more then that our desire become a problem uh, become a object of problem to attain rajip of bhagwan and sant how let we see Bhagwan Swaminarayan he was traveling uh, in in the form of Nilgandhvarni meaning in his early age he was traveling throughout India after leaving his home he start he began his journey from Ayodhya and afterward gradually he went in the Himalaya after completing the yatra in the Himalaya uh, Bhagwan Swaminarayan in the Nilgandhvarni form he traveled in dense jungle after that bhagwan also travel on southern part of india western part of india and finally he arrived in gujarat and at the time bhagwan arrived and he was traveling in southern part of gujarat at the time meaning that part is known as kathiawar or surat at the time once bhagwan swaminar was traveling from one village to another he passed through mahua rajula and many other different small villages at that time maharaj was staying in one village and he was uh, staying in one village and there was at the time we know in india uh, in particular gujarat there were many uh, like rich persons those who fear brahmins or those who are the travelers or those who are uh, who who had no any kind of like facility for accommodation or having food so those rich people they fear so uh, such kind of people and as maharaj reached in that village there was a small rest house for general people who were traveling from one place to another so maharaj in nilkanthwarni farm so nilkanthwarni stay there in the rest house or we can say dharmsara so bhagwan stay there and as we know bhagwan has no desire to eat anything when he was in nilkanthwarni farm so he didn't eat anything for one day and the next day in the morning when he de- uh, decide to uh, he, de- he had decided to uh left the village for another place but before that a person came to him 
that person, he was very rich. There is no one richer or wealthier than that person. But the another thing is that he wore old torn clothes and a dirty feathered cap. and he had no shoes and he was barefoot so he came there and so by looking that person no one can guess that this is the wealthier person in this town or in this village he was looking like a poor or beggar and he came to came there to meet maharaj and he came there he bowed down to nilkantwarni understanding this is a great sage and after that he requested he by folding his hands he said please maharaj came to my please come to my home and eat some food i have prepared myself food for you so please come to my home and eat something then maharaj understood his intention behind invitation of taking lunch but still maharaj decided to liberate that soul so maharaj said okay let's go and maharaj along with that person that said he was known as a said in the village even though he had wealthier person but still he did not use even money for himself because he want to become a millionaire so he saved his money and he tried to increase his income his wealth his property and this is also one of his investments we can say in today's term like if he fed some food to this brahmachari or this sadhu then if that sadhu bless him and because of his blessings he can earn more we- more wealth or he become a millionaire this is his goal and that's why he invited nilkantwarni to take a lunch at home now at the said as the said walked with nilkantwarni through the village on the way to his home people stared at him because people knew him that this is the said who had much more well than the all the other villagers and still he is not using any single paisa for himself and still he invited this varni only because he want to ask something from this brahmachari so there were whispers like uh, this uh, just like these things that this is a very greedy person and he invited this brahmachari and after feeding him he definitely will ask some wealth so someone added i am sure he is doing this with a definite purpose in exchange of his lunch the said is going to take a lot from him the said got a special feast cooked for nilkant and treated him very well on every morsel that nilkant took the said took the said dreamed of great wealth just as bhagwan is eating his sweet bowl then the said in front of bhagwan he was not doing darshan he had no like any intention in his mind to earn bhagwan's rajipo nothing but he he, he was uh, uh, he was thinking at the same time that just as this brahmachari is eating this sweet bowl in exchange for this sweet ball he'll give me gold coins so in his mind in his vision he was watching gold coins a plate full of gold coins when bhagwan is eating another things he was thinking for jewelry as bhagwan drinking a water he was thinking for some golden vessels like pot or golden plate in this way he was thinking different different things but he was not doing darshan of bhagwan now nilkantwarni has finished his lunch and when vorni got up 
He blessed the Seth and his family with peace and happiness. As Maharaj finished his lunch, he got up from his seat and now he decided to go back to his uh, accommodation, meaning in a rest house. So at the time, Nilkantvarni, he blessed that Seth by saying, God bless you and may God bless you with the peace and happiness. Then as he was about to leave, meaning Nilkantvarni was about to leave, the Seth asked him, Oh, Holy Sage, I treated you so well. Won't you offer me anything in return? So this is the problem. This is the obstacle to attain Rajipo. Because we are doing many things, but we have expect expectation for attaining something. If we do something for Bhagwan, we have some ex uh, remain expectation that to attain something like if I do this for Bhagwan, then I uh, ask something from Bhagwan that uh, please Maharaj grant me some great success in examination or please Bhagwan uh, I have I five so please do something in mind of my parents so that they can uh, give me I ten. In this way, different different kinds of things we expect from Bhagwan, and this is not the way to earn Rajivo. If we do something for Bhagwan, if we do something for Santo, if we do something for Guruji, or if we do some bhajan or anything religious, then we have to keep only focus on our ultimate goal to earn Rajivo, nothing else. If we have any expectation or if we have any other goal or we have any like something to attain something uh, in return of what we are doing then that is our business with Bhagwan. if we just as in a store if we want to buy something then we take that things and in return we have to pay for it in the same way if we are expecting something from Bhagwan, if we are wanting something from Bhagwan, then that is our business with Bhagwan. If we do some seva for Bhagwan and Bhagwan will give in return something, whatever we wish, then our and Bhagwan's relation is done. Just as ours and the shopkeeper's relation was done after after the payment and if we take our things then our business, our relation is done in the same way. If we wish something from Bhagwan and Bhagwan will give us that thing, then our relation with Bhagwan is cut, meaning it's done. So we do not want to do that. So we want to own Rajipo and that's why we do not wish anything besides Rajipo from Bhagwan and Sant. So here the said has something from Bhagwan. So Nilkant Varni had recognized the true nature of that seed and in spite of that Bhagwan had taken lunch with him. So he wanted to liberate the seeds. So now hearing the seed ask for something in return, Nilkant Varni could not resist smiling. He inquired, said, do you know who I am? Then said, say yes. You are a great soul. I know you are very holy sage and you have achieved everything and perhaps you are God himself. But please give me some wealth because I know you are the powerful person. You, you have the authority to give me the wealth. So please grant me some wealth. Bless me in such a way that I will attain more wealth in my life. Then Nilkantvarni felt pity at the seed, not on his nature but on his soul. So this is the another thing. Bhagwan and Bhagwan Sikadik Sant, they are not looking at our physical body or our physical relation or uh, whatever we are looking. But Bhagwan and his true Ekantik Sant, like Puja Guruji, they are watching our soul. They are thinking for liberating or liberation of our soul. 
and that is why they are doing or they are advising us or they are inspiring us in such a way by which our soul will grant liberation. So Maharaj only just smiling and then Seth was surprised and he asked, why do you smile like this? Why are you lost in thoughts? Please grant me such kind of blessings so that I can attain some more wealth. Please give me 100,000, 200,000, 500,000, 2500,000. Please grant me, please speak some word. Then Maharaj replied, said, Is there anyone richer than you in this village? The said said, No, Brahmachari, this is a very small village and there is no one wealthier than me. I am the only richer person in this village. Then Maharaj asked him, Then why are you wanting some more wealth from me? Then he said, no, I want to be richest in the world. I do not want to remain in this very small village. I want to become more wealthier than the richest man on this earth. Then I have satisfied my desire, meaning then I become satisfied myself. Then Nilkanforni remained quiet again. Then again, Seth said, why don't you say something? Please say, say something for me. Then finally Nilkan said, don't worry, Seth. I'll satisfy you well. I'll liberate you from the fire that is burning your soul. Then the said, he did not understand anything, what Nilkan Horni said. So he said, yes, yes, that's why I want to... I want to be relieved from this fire of, uh, fire of, of burning, that is, uh, the fire which is burning my heart day and night for wealth. So please grant me some more wealth. Then again, Nilkan did not say some, anything and finally he said, Say, tell me one thing. Since the time you were born, how many days did you go without eating anything because of no money? Then said, said, no, not a single day. Every day I eat, meaning my father was also landlord. He had too much money and uh, I have also more than my father's. And so I do not have seen those kind of poor days in my life. Then, and that is why I want to become a millionaire. Then Maharaj said, you do not need that much wealth because you do not remain hungry for a single day or single time or you have enough clothes to cover your body. Then what? Then why do you need that much wealth? This is enough pleasure for you. But the said, he did not agreed with Nilkant and he again and again asked, please grant me the blessings. I want to become the wealthiest person on this earth. Then Nilkant Varni, he gave him Updes, meaning le- uh, teachings that said this world you are living is called a Mrityulog, meaning no one in this world is f- for permanent. Everyone has to die one day. Everyone has to leave this earth, this home, this body. So if you leave this body, then what after, what will happen after you're leaving this body to your wealth? They remain as it is on this earth. So please forget this greed for wealth or your dream to become a millionaire. Then... The state was not easy to be convinced, but still deep inside him lay a little good, and Nilkant had recognized it. The state argued, Lord, may I ask you something? 
then Nilkan Pandey said, go ahead. And isn't it true that then he make many, many arguments that when Bhagwan in the form of Lord Sri Krishna, when he was in a small town of Gokul or we can say Mathura, then at the time he had uh, like uh, in the, when he, he had no money, then everyone called him Kanudo and when he become a king of Dwarka and so everyone like bow down to him, everyone gave him respect. So if one has wealth in this world, then he received respect from all. And if one has no wealth, no money, then no one gave him respect. That's why I want to be a wealthy person. But Bhagwan said, all, all of your wealth also remain in this world and you have to go after leaving this body and this earth and your property, your wealth, everything. But still, the said uh, did not understand what Bhagwan wanted to say. He said, no, I want money, I want money, nothing else. Then Nilkan Huni said, so said, read yourself of your desire. God takes care of every living being and he'll do the same for you. Remember one thing, that one who has more wealth has more dissatisfaction inside him. There is no wealth like living your life with satisfaction. Since you have fed me, it becomes my duty to look after your life in this world and the world beyond. So in this way, Nilkant Varani was giving lessons to this greedy saint. And finally, Bhagwan says, I have immeasur immeasurable spiritual wealth and today I am giving that to you. And by saying this, Nilkan Phani gave a di divine look and graced the Seth. Meaning Bhagwan blessing that Seth. And with his divine glance or divine look on Seth, Seth like feeling something different. And he was feeling something like uh, he had something happen. And the next moment, Seth's eyes made with Nilkans and finally he become totally changed. He had a now a uh, different kind of uh, inner happiness or inner joy. His eyes full before that, which the same eyes before uh, remain always, uh, the eyes remaining searching of wealth, money. Now the same eyes become totally changed and those eyes now looking like satisfied in this way he, the said totally changed and after Nilkan's departure he was drawn after him unconsciously and finally he stopped near the banks of river and watched Nilkan walking away till the till Nilkan disappear in the horizon now said's face reflects a sacred glow now and his whole being with the name of Nilkant and as he returned home the local residents they noticed the change in this greedy person now his, his face his eyes his like walking style everything is different he became totally changed he had no desire for attaining more wealth and instead of that he remained like satisfied in his heart that whatever Bhagwan has given me that is even more than what I can use. In this way, he remained happy within. This is what Nilkan is divine charitra, meaning a uh, divine episode from the life of Bhagwan and the incident also gives us the message not to keep greed or not to desire anything else besides Bhagwan's Rajivo. If we do something for Bhagwan, then Bhagwan will become pleased upon us that must be our goal, not anything else. Meaning, if we wish anything from Bhagwan, Bhagwan definitely will give us. But after that, our and Bhagwan's relation do not remain. Meaning, Bhagwan stop our relation. So, if we want to continue our relation with Bhagwan, then we have to keep this mind that whatever we perform in religious or whatever we practice or whatever we do something 
for Bhagwan, then we do not wish anything besides Rajipo. So let me pray to Maharaj, please grant us such intellect, such buddhi, so that we can also keep our mind focused only and only upon our goal to attain Rajipo. Sri Ganshyam Maharajani Jai Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadeveshwaram Bhaktidhar Matmajam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swaminarayanam Nilakantham Bhaja Sri Ganshyam Maharajani Jai